Hi there! It's time to exercise what we just learned about the requests and the JSON module. Create a quizzing game. You should make an HTTP request to the Open Trivia API at each round to get a new question. At the end of each round, ask the user if he wants to play again and keep playing until he types quit. This is going to be a great challenge for you, and this is actually the coolest exercise in this course. So I hope you have fun, and when you're done, come back here to see the solution. I'm here at the Open Trivia API website to get the URL we are going to use to make our HTTP requests. Since we are going to get one question per round, we can just leave one here. And then you can choose the category you want for now, or just leave any category, any difficulty, any type, and the default encoding. So I'm just going to click Generate API URL, and this is the URL I'm going to use for the HTTP requests. So I'm going to create a variable called URL, and I'm going to store that URL to use later. Before we get started, we need to import the modules we are going to use for this exercise, which are going to be requests and JSON. So we want to keep this game playing forever until the user types quit. So to do that, I'm going to create a variable called end game, which is going to be an empty string. Now I'm going to create a while loop and I'm going to put while end game is not equal to quit then we are going inside the loop. So when we start the game we have an empty string so we're going inside this loop. At the end of each round I'm going to ask the user to press enter to get another question or to type quit to quit the game. If the user does it, then we're going to interrupt this loop because the end game variable is going to be equal to quit. Now the first thing we need to do at each round is getting a new question. So requests.get and now we already have a variable called URL. Before working with the response, we need to make sure the status code is 200. So let's start an if statement here. So if r.status code is not 200, then let's print a message. Sorry, there was a problem retrieving the question. Press enter to try again or type quit to quit the game. So instead of printing it, I'm just going to get the variable end game and I'm going to use it here in an input. So if the user presses enter, then the end game is still going to be an empty string. So we're going to go in this loop again and try to get a new question. But if the user types quit, when we go back to this loop, this is going to return false. So we're going to jump out of this loop. This is exactly what I'm going to do at the end of the game as well. So this was just to make sure that the status code is 200. So if the status code is 200, we are going to go inside this else state. So here we are going to start the game. The first thing we need to do is get the response data. So let's create a variable called data and use json.loads and let's get the response text. Now before going ahead, let's print the data to check if everything is right. So instead of just printing it, I'm going to use that module called pprint just so we can have a better view of the JSON data. So here this is going to be pprint.pprint and then our data. If I run this program now, we're going to be inside this loop forever. 
So let's include an input here. Just so we can pause this loop. So I'm going to save this and press F5. I just made a mistake here. This wasn't supposed to be status, but status code. So let's go back here and change it to status code. Let's run it again. And if we are seeing this, it's because our status code is 200. So we have the data to work with. We are not running forever in this loop because I included this input. But if I press enter, we're going to go inside it again. So at each round, we're going to get a new question. So let's go back to the code and work on the data. And now what we want here is the question, the incorrect answers and the correct answer. So let's create a variable for the question first. So question is going to be data. This is an object. So we are going to use the key results. So results, results is a list. So we want the first element, which is this object. So let's use zero. And now we want the question key. So question. Let's do the same thing for the answers. I'm not going to call it incorrect answers, and you're going to understand why in a moment. So here we're going to use the incorrect answers key. And now let's get the correct answer. which is the correct answer key. So now that we have the data we need, what I'm going to do is appending the correct answer to the answers list. I don't know if you noticed, but the incorrect answers is a list and the correct answer is a string. So now that I already have the correct answer to compare with the user's answer later, I can append it to the answers list which is the one I'm going to use to present the possible answers. So let's do answers dot append and let's append the correct answer. So the correct answer is going to be added at the end of the answers list. Since we're going to use a loop to present the answers, this is not going to be very good because the correct answer is always going to be the last one. So we need to shuffle this array. If you're not sure how to do it, you can just go to Google and type Python shuffle array. Someone already asked how to do this in Stack Overflow. So we can find the answer here. If you go down here, you're going to see this very simple solution using the random module. So let's copy this. And import random. Now we can shuffle our answers array. This way, the correct answer is not going to be at the end of the list. So now we have all the answers shuffled inside this answers list. And we also have the correct answer in a separate variable. So we can compare it with the user's answer. Now it's time to print the question and the answers. So let's print the question first. Let's concatenate it with a line break which is backwards slash n, just so we have a space between the question and the answers. Now, since we have a list of answers, 
we can use a for in loop. So for answer in answers, we can print all of them. At each iteration of this loop, we're going to print one answer. Let's include an input here, just so we can pause this. And let's see what we have so far. So now we have the question and the answers. We have a problem here because the questions come with HTML entities. This is a code that represents a quotation mark. This was used probably to avoid conflicts with the quotation marks of the strings, or maybe for a different reason. It doesn't matter. What matters is we're going to have to solve this to present this in a clean way. So to do this, we're going to have to use the HTML module. So just go to the terminal and you can do pip install HTML. So let's import the HTML module. And instead of printing the question like this, we're going to use a method called unescape, which is going to take care of those HTML entities. Let's do it for the question. And let's do it for the answers as well. Let's run it again. So now we don't have problem with the quotation marks. So we have the question and we have the answers. But how is the user going to send his answer? If he has to type it, this is going to be a problem because he's going to have to type exactly like shown here. Otherwise, we won't know if this is right or not. So instead of just printing the answers like this, let's put numbers and the user is just going to reply a number. And right here, before we start each round, let's create a variable called answer number, which is going to be one in the beginning of every round. So inside this loop here, instead of just printing the answers, let's convert our answer number to string, then let's concatenate it with a dash and a space, and then the answer. Now let's see what we have here. This is working, but I just forgot to increment the variable at each iteration of the loop. So after printing the answer, let's just type answer number and the incremental operator. So if we do this, this is how the answers are going to be presented. So the user would just have to reply one, two, three, or four. This is getting better.